welcome to another edition of Date Me Fuel with Trey Hatch. Today we're making Ratatouille, which apart from being a really fun movie, is also the greatest celebration of essentially a vegetable stew. So it kind of has a gourmet connotation, but it's really simple and really easy and incredibly flavorful. So here's basically the elements that are contained in a, in a standard ratatouille, but you can add anything you want. Uh, it almost always has eggplant, some kinds of squash, some kinds of pepper, onion, garlic, and some herbs. The most traditional flavoring for ratatouille is to use herbe de Provence, which is actually a spice mixture. Classically, herbe de Provence contains uh, some marjoram, thyme, rosemary, savory, and then it may or may not have in it ground bay leaf, and this is actually the buds from lavender bush. Um, lavender is not always included in Herbe de Provence, but it adds a certain piney, fruity element that is just quintessentially provincial. So I love adding it in. You can buy a little in the spice jar Herbes de Provence, but you can also just make the mixture yourself, which is what we've done today. So, uh, we're going to get started, start our chopping. It only takes us a few minutes to get this sautéing and sweating and get all those flavors combined and we'll have ratatouille. The first vegetable that I'm going to get prepped is the onion and the garlic because while they sit, they won't brown and oxidize, whereas the eggplant will a little bit. So, as you notice, I just sliced this onion north to south and then cut off the hairy end that grows into the ground. That right there? And it goes away. And now, based on how thick I want my slices to be, I will use my finger as a guide. And because I want these chunks to be about three quarter inch chunks, instead of cutting all the way through, I leave a little bit connected there on this end. This is the sprout end that grows out of the ground. This will determine the width of my chunks, and I turn it the other way and crossways. So this gives me about three quarter inch chunks, which is just about right because we're going to keep all the vegetables roughly about the same size. And the next part is our garlic. So just to remove your garlic from the whole head, just kind of press on that head. And then once you have separated cloves, we want to peel them. So we just whack it gently with a knife and walk it right out of its skin. If you don't like touching garlic because it gets a lot of that smell on your hands, this method is very effective. Let's try it again. Whack it gently with the flat part of your knife. Just to crack it, you can grab that little stem end and kind of walk it out of its skin like that. And you don't actually have to even touch it. I'm going to do about three cloves. Once you get the skin removed, whack it to mince it. Give it a slight chop. And you have your garlic prepped. The next vegetables that we're going to do are our red or green or yellow or orange bell peppers. You can absolutely use the big kind. Uh, these are the small miniatures, and I'm falling in love with them because they're a little bit sweeter, a little bit more tender. And I get a variety of colors. So I'm going to use a little bit of a red. And rather than take the seeds and the ribs out, which we normally would do, because these are so tender, you don't have to clean out the insides. So that's an extra bonus. And I'm going to kind of match that 3 quarters inch size on these as well. And the different colors sure add to the visual appeal of the dish. Okay, our peppers are done. Now we are going to add the uh, element of squash. And I like to use two different colors if they're available. So we'll start with some zucchini. And we want everything to sort of be done at the same time. So I'm going to cut the zucchini in half and then give it, again, about a three-quarter inch dice. Guard the ends. Okay. 
These are also called summer squash. They have a slightly thicker skin than zucchini, so if you're adding these, you might want to add the yellow ones just a minute or two before so that they cook just a minute or two longer. So I'm going to put them in a separate dish. Can you picture now this beautiful melange of color coming together? And if they're extraordinarily wide, or if you have one bigger than the other, kind of try and match size of bits so that they cook up at the same pace. All right. So the last ingredient that goes in is probably the most well-known, and that's eggplant. And you can get Asian eggplant that are small and thin or tiny little balls, or you can use a traditional European eggplant. If you're not familiar with working with eggplant, they're wonderful and easy to use. Um, I just trim the ends, cut it down, and then I'll probably cut it one more time so that I kind of match that size of roughly three-quarter inch is what I'm going for. And then I'm going to take my knife, form nice long strips. and just dice it into these cute little eggplant cubes. It's kind of spongy inside. The seeds get quite soft, so we don't have to remove them. Uh, you can peel your eggplant if you don't prefer any of the skin, but it does also saute up quite soft and nice, so you probably don't even need to worry about it. And because this will oxidize in the air as it sits, I prep this one last, right before we are ready to go to the stove. And we can deglaze our vegetables with a little liquid. We can use tomatoes, which isn't traditional, but in this case we can either use canned tomatoes, or if it's summertime you've got really beautiful homegrown fresh tomatoes, use them. So let's go over to the stove and let's get cranking. Now it's time to actually cook all these vegetables that we've just chopped. So we have, first going into the pan, our hardest vegetables that we want to infuse a lot of savory element into the oil with. So into my medium hot pan here, I'm going to add some olive oil. I'm generous with that. And in goes the peppers, the onion, and the garlic. Saute that together. It only needs about a minute because what we're actually doing is infusing that olive oil with all this yummy, savory flavor. And while this is going in, we're also going to add our herbe de Provence mixture uh, and our bay leaf so that those can also flavor our oil. And so in another minute, We'll add the rest of our vegetables and let this sweat down. And I'm already starting to smell that garlic as it simmers. We don't want garlic to overcook. It can get toasted. It can get uh, too brown and take on an abrasive flavor. We just want it to be uh, nice and sweet to match our onion. So in a minute, we'll add the rest. The garlic has been in here for about a minute. It's fragrant, but it's not yet getting brown and toasty. So it's just the perfect spot to add more elements. So in goes our beautiful eggplant that we've cut. And I don't mind the skin, so I leave them on. But if you prefer, you're welcome to take the skins off. And we have the two kinds of squash. I have the yellow summer squash and the zucchini summer squash. With that slightly tougher uh, skin, we're going to put that in first and let it cook for a minute before we add the zucchini. Okay, our summer squash has had a little head start on our other zucchini. Let's put the rest of the zucchini in. And you can chop up your parsley, but quite frankly, my favorite way to do parsley is to add it in stem and all so you don't waste the stem. And then I'll just fish out those long strands of parsley right before I serve it. So this just gets another saute for a minute. Then we're going to deglaze the pan, which basically means 
We are going to use some liquid of some kind. We could use anything. We could use wine. In this case, I'm going to use tomatoes because they, they have so much uh, water in them. And it's going to melt down any of those brown bits, those sugars that are on the bottom of the pan, and pull those up into the flavor of the whole dish. It's so that the, uh, it'll arrest any further browning of the onion or the garlic or any of these vegetables. So we're at that place right now. So in go our tomatoes. And you can hear it start to sizzle as those tomatoes start to render liquid into the bottom of the pan. If your tomatoes are very, very dry, you might want to add a little extra liquid. Again, you could use anything. You could use uh, tomato sauce, a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of water, a little wine. Even juice is good. Okay, so we'll just give it a little bit of salt and pepper. A grind of nice fresh black pepper. And isn't it beautiful already? I love these elegant colors. So everything's in, we've seasoned it. And now we're just gonna turn down the heat Put on the lid, allow it to simmer for another 15 to 20 minutes is all it needs, or up to a couple of hours if you want it very soft and thick like a ragu sauce. And you can see behind it I have some tiny little baby potatoes boiling so we can serve it with potatoes. The ratatouille has been simmering now for about 20 minutes and all the uh, flavors are combined together and it's really robust. But it still has some juice at the bottom of the pan. You can kind of see it through the vegetables there. We don't want it to be dry. So now I've kind of uh, finished using these parsley pieces. Uh, you're welcome to chop them up and then you don't have to remove them. But before I serve, I'll go ahead and take the parsley out so I don't have any big long strands of parsley. And then we're just about ready to plate this and serve it. But before we do, the one thing we want to do is to check for seasoning. So, I think I would definitely want to add another grind of salt and one more grind of pepper. Always check your food before plating so you can correct the seasoning with salt and pepper. All right, now onto the plate it goes. Let's plate this beautiful ratatouille. So the reason we wanted to use as many different colors as possible is because it does have a little bit of a brown tone. So we want it to have as much bright, pretty color as possible. I'm gonna get some of the juice in here. I'm serving it alongside some uh, tiny little baby spring potatoes that have been boiled and buttered. Uh, and now we're just going to top it with any cheese will do. You don't even have to use cheese, it's not traditional, but a little Parmigiano Reggiano, some Asiago, um, or even a Gouda. This, in this case, is a smoked Gouda, which will add a lot of contrasting elements to the whole dish. Uh, serve this, if you like, on its own over pasta with rice or with a nice piece of chicken or fish or anything else that you want. A, a fried egg would be really robust and, and, and very authentic in the south of France. So enjoy your ratatouille. The final thing I'm going to do is grab a little olive oil and we're just going to drizzle it for garnish. A drizzle of olive oil for garnish just to enrich that dish and our ratatouille is ready. Thank you.